What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom, man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking about tonight's Thursday NBA slate. We got a small one after the massive slate, as we're used to. And uh, yeah, it's a fun little slate here tonight. I I, uh, I had a I had a little small winning night on FanDuel, losing that on DK because I bubbled the 888, um, or not bubbled, but you know, ten places away or something like that. Always weird when the where where all the chalk comes from game goes into double overtime. So you know, it's tough to do. But I, I thought I had. Oh, a- is that what happened? Yeah, I went double overtime oh. in OKC. And and I should have known because I asked for it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. So so that uh, you know, and, and Javon Carter putting up 60, 59 fantasy oh points. My God. It was it was a it was a wild one. And but I, you know, I felt good about most of the plays we made, you know what I mean? The most of the So I guess that- so I guess uh Dwight Powell didn't win the slate. I don't know if Dwight Powell scored 10 fantasy points. Oh, so I guess that wouldn't have done it, huh? Um, but and then the Eubanks thing came in afterwards, so that was the big uh you know, and you banks, you know, 10 X or whatever. Um, but I, you know, I, I literally, in, in my, in one of my, in my two twenty two that I said, I, I needed LeBron and AD and, uh, and, and sorry, LeBron and uh, Paul George to score about 140 combined. But I also could have just done one very simple thing and won the tournament. And that would have been play Brooke Lopez instead of Bobby Portis. <laughs> that would yeah, have, that wins so, me to do. So I'm going to, we'll, we'll, we'll live sweat my FanDuel results. I literally haven't checked them yet. Okay. Um, I played, I played $55 by, uh, uh, event entries in, in in the lottery and i think i had like almost 100 I, ha- I think i had like 60 percent white Powell, so i think i know what what ended up happening um <laughs> i'll take a look um but i had a great light last night in general because i just wanted to share a little trip yeah. report so for those that didn't hear this so there's a uh, a guy i knew back from poker his name is uh, jj lieberman on, on twitter that's his actual name also and he, he was a poker x factor sub but he played like poker back in the day and he became a comedian like 10 years ago and and He's been, you know, he's from Toronto and he's been, you know, kind of like struggling in like in like the romantic sense, like a struggling comedian, you know, like just trying to work his way up, you know, and all this stuff traveling and all the stories you hear about how, how tough it is in the business. So he, he every once in a while he makes it to New York to, to, to you know, perform like a small show or something. I've been threatening for years to go and, and see him. And I finally did yesterday. I went into the to, to, to Brooklyn like late at night, which is like, again, not not a young man's game going out like on a Tuesday at like 11 o'clock, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, to, uh, Wednesday to go out. So, and, and, and I met up with him uh, and, and we met up like 45 minutes before the show started. And he was like the host, you know, the guy that goes on and like does a bit. And then somebody comes on that he does a bit with. And he introduced me like all the other guys that were performing. And we basically hung up for like an hour before the show. And, 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 you know, for me, like everything's like kind of a cool learning experience. So I was like talking to him all about the comedy business and like how hard it is and like, got all their stories and stuff like that. It was really, it was really interesting. The show itself is fine. You know what I mean? But whatever, but, but uh, it was, it was a really cool night. I caught up with them about poker. We talked about different, you know, things that are similar between poker grinds and comedy grinds. So overall it was a very, very good night. If, 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 if it wasn't such a great DFS night. So I'm, uh, I'm ready to, uh, to, uh, to get after it uh, today though. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. That sounds like a lot of fun. I would have loved to hear that. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm totally fascinated by that. I actually, for a while started writing my own stand-up stuff and was supposed to go do a couple shows, but kind of chickened out a little bit. Oh, really? A few life things came out. Yeah. Right. It was more just to test it out. And I had some friends who it's, it's funny, you know, she said just real quick about the comedy thing. Some of my friends who I wouldn't consider funny, like in social situations and probably a little bit more reserved actually write some of the best comedy and did some of the best stand-up I've seen. It's a really unusual like thing that you, you wouldn't think it was that way, but it really is with a lot of people. So I thought maybe I could I could give it a shot. And I sort of like some of the things I was writing, but it just was it was, you know, during this whole and look, I, I'm 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 on I'm I'm in between on the PC thing. I don't want to be the PC police, I don't want to be that. So it just felt like everything I was writing, I just was second guessing myself so much. I I, I kind of chickened out to, to say. Well, I'll tell I'll tell you what's interesting is I asked them about this because all the guys that I saw were very were very uh were very dirty slash launchy comedians. You know, that's that's that that's their their niche. Like that's what they do. And and I asked them, I said, you know, in I haven't seen comedy in 20 years. I mean, really. I mean, like the only uh, my, my the old comedy I see are when you you know watching on HBO or like I pay like like hundreds to go see somebody famous. You know what I mean? Like I don't like ever see like the underground com- you know, com- comedians. And I asked them, you know, given you know, everything that's, that's you know developed in the last like 20 years about what you can say, what you can't say. I wonder how it's affected, you know, what you can say and like what your bits are and what you what you whatever. And he says, you know, it's really not as it, it was. There was a there was, there was a little bit of backlash, but it's kind of like come the other way now. I mean, like people are uh, uh, they they can pretty much say whatever they want nowadays um, because like the backlash against the backlash, at least in the comedian in the, the comedy uh, circuit, is kind of uh, kind of and, and and 
Quite honestly, I mean, for me, um, I don't want to get too much into this, but if, if you're a comedy comic and you're on a set and 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 the people know that you're 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 doing a bit, whatever, I really think you could probably say whatever you want. You know, like if you're if you're like if you're if you're if you're if you're in other situations, even you know, and being interviewed or something like that, then you have to, you know, I don't think you can say anything you want. But when you are literally in form and like you are like by definition an act and by definition, you know, on stage. Like yep. that, I, I think you, from in the humor perspective, I think you could probably say whatever you want. But that's, again, I, I don't want to get into a political discussion. But that, no, no, that, no, 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 no. Yeah, I, 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 no, it's, it's even more than political. I just, I just think it's, I, I, right. that was my my reasoning for backing out, which maybe was a mistake. I'm, I'm looking at a couple of things early in the day that I wanted okay. to, to just address. Oh, there it is. It's, it's the main, it's very strange how uh, there, there was one thing on Saber Sim. I think it might have been a little bit of a gl glitch today. Am I missing something? Am I just on the what wrong happened? day? Oh, I'm on the wrong day. That's why it's happening. Oh. Up four games, but it had them all starting at the same time. I think that it was just, I just was user error on that one. I got seven, seven thirty, seven thirty, and eight. Yep. That's right. Um, I just was looking at it from at, on the wrong screen. Um, all right. So let's, let's, let's jump into it. This is a, you know, it's a four gamer. I I'm, I'm starting to find a little more fondness for these smaller slates because the big ones get so, I mean, there's just so many good plays and you end up just, you end up set, you know, sort of insulting certain plays or, or, or just writing guys off that are just, I just go, I don't want to play that guy at, you know, high ownership when there's 700 guys to choose from that I feel like have more of an, it, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm sort of turning myself away from, maybe it's my age. I'm turning more towards these, these smaller slates being a little bit more manageable and trying to get creative within these, uh these little slates to get off the chalk. So we're going to try and do that today. Um, Sheets, you ready to, to start with Dallas, Washington? Yeah. So Dallas is playing a back-to-back -back, um, uh, against Washington. And I imagine that, especially being a four-game slate, that Luca is going to be someone that's you know you probably want to play if you can. You know he's projecting for me to be you know full six points more than anybody else. Uh, and and after Embiid, it's like a it's like ten points in this guy pretty much. You know it's it's uh so so to give up the the the, the raw points of one of those two guys is kind of kind of asking for it um but you know 12 five is, is 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 no bargain and the other thing i would say is that at least now like if you sort sort my stuff by point per dollar there isn't that much like just slam dunk value you know um there's one i'm going to talk about in literally in like within three minutes here um but a couple of observations uh on the dallas side is that with I don't want to say with, with, I guess, Christian Wood out. I guess that matters. Yep. Um, what's his name? Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie really um, has controlled the, the, the second unit. Okay. Um, and that, you know, we don't talk about it as much this year as we did, like, or even last year as much as we did the years before, but getting those second unit minutes, you know, especially when you're also going to get like a decent amount of total minutes, right? Is, is 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 a pretty big deal so uh he's got really just insane rates to start the season with, with the second unit i mean that's gonna regress i i guess but 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 uh but nonetheless i mean he he's probably gonna rate to be really really strong the other thing i would i would say about dallas is i would not overreact to um to the maxi kleber thing um yep. so you know he he did play 33 minutes yesterday um but that's that's not usually what happens um so I, i'm not saying that he's a bad play I mean, he's 3400 on a slate which is which is bereft of value but there, there's i mean how many times have i wanted to play maxi cleaver and you're like just just chill you know what i mean so so especially if he's going to be chalky um uh i don't know if, if if that's the right thing to do that doesn't mean you go right, you know, you go back to, to Dwight Powell. Um, but um, I, I think that you could, you could fade that. Um, other things from the Mavericks, again, I don't really have that much. Um, if anything, I, you, you look, look, you always get Dorian Finney Smith showing up as, as an okay value, especially on the small slates. Um, and maybe, maybe it's not bad actually uh, on the Washington side, I'm getting, Boy, oh boy, what 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 is this price? Um, I, again, I'm just it's eyeballing it, but I see Will Barton at 4100. Um, I don't know what happened, what what his story is, but 
but it seems at least instinctively that looks like a good play. All of these other guys that we used to play, uh, Rui Hachimura is 4,100. That mm-hmm. seems seems pretty reasonable. Um, Chris Stop is 85. So what, I guess Bradley Beal is out? Bradley Beal is out, yeah. So, I mean, wh- why not play those guys? I don't know. It's, that sounds reasonable. So uh, Rui Hachimura, talk to me about him. Talk to me about Will Barton. And, and talk to me about Dallas also. Yeah, so this is everything I was saying on the other slate, and this is what I want people to remember. Is slate size and value and what opportunity really does matter because there was a guy who brought up Will Barton the other night with, with Beal out on the 15, on the full slate. The, the, okay. the, right. And I just said that would be a terrible, that could be on a terrible play. But at on a, on a four-game slate where we're looking for value, I think Will Barton is, is, is a very reasonable play. Um, the matchup is less than ideal, but, but I wouldn't just, the problem is it's, it's what do, how do you, how do you differentiate? We know Abdia will start and at least have opportunity. The problem is his minutes are a little bit in flux in general. He doesn't really produce at a very high level per minute. I think Will Barton and, and Rui are, are both really interesting plays. Um, and especially, you know, maybe let ownership even dictate a little bit of, of what you want to do here, because, uh, you know, where do these guys stand in relation to that Dallas value we mentioned? Cause and, and those are speculative as well. You've also got Corey Kispert, who, you know, is going to play 20 some odd minutes and probably be the unowned one of the bunch. And he's at least starting. So it's just a lot of a lot of guys who I feel like I rate very similarly on both these teams, to be honest with you. I always give the bump to the team that's going to get the pay, the, the, that's the slower paced team that's getting a little bit of a bump up because Washington has to place the slowest paced team or the second slowest paced team in the NBA in Dallas. So I'm giving a little bit more edge to the Dallas guys. The problem is trying to figure out who. They've been doing an interesting thing, and Josh Green was their first round pick a couple year, a few years back, and and I think people expected a lot more out of him than he's been. But he's trending in the right direction in terms of minutes, and he probably ends up as I'm going to guess the lowest owned of all of these weird value plays, and probably projecting the worst. I think that might be something worth taking a shot on, hoping you get your twenty out of him and the other guys bust. But the way I've got it written out for this first game is basically Luca obviously has a strong play, but. I would, I think Luca, I mean, obviously they proved last night, you can play Luca and Dinwiddie together, but I've got a Luca or Dinwiddie or THJ basically, uh, and Din, Din, more, it's more Dinwiddie or THJ because I think Tim Hardaway Jr. is, is completely reasonable at 4k. Then you've got the Kleba. I would probably pick one of him or DFS if I was going to pick any of them. And this is just my early first look. And then on the other side, I would probably pick Barton or Rui because one of those guys will lead the second unit. And then I would pick potentially Abdia or Kispert. Right now, none of them are really striking me as, as awesome plays, but I don't think we're going to have a bunch of those. So all of those guys are in my mix right now, and I'm going to let ownership dictate where I'm at. Sort of like I did even on a big slate last night, I realized if I played a, if I played Garland and 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 even Mobley, with, I wasn't getting enough off the board anywhere that I felt like I could crush something. That's why I switched over to the Lillard combination with uh, with Noel, because Lillard was 3% owned, and and by the end that, of the game, uh, Darius Garland was 46% owned on DraftKings. That's, um, who, that's who I ended up playing, by the way, that middling more thing instead of Durant, whatever. Yeah. I played Lillard in my big buy-in, actually. Yeah, and he had it going for a while. He, he, he only had one fantasy point in the, in the fourth quarter. He, was up to, he, he got really hot at the end of the third, and I look, and they went on like a 12-0 run to start the fourth, and it was all Anthony Simons who put up like 20 fantasy points in like three minutes. Um, Lillard, hoping- Lillard, also, Lillard also only scored six fantasy points in the first quarter. I know. He, it was the middle quarters. He was, he was on fire, though. Um, anyway, so, so it's, it's an interesting game that, that we're probably going to look for some value if we don't find some elsewhere. Because there's just a lot of th- – these are a lot of guys who I hate playing on big slates that I like to play on these small slates. And I'm not – I mean, look, you could say, look, a little Chris stops revenge, but uh, not a good matchup. But – I mean, I don't know, man. It's I, I, I could buy into Chris Stops being a little bit pissed off and taking a few extra shots tonight. That feels like a narrative I could get behind a little bit, especially with no Bradley Beal. So I think Chris Stops is definitely in play here. And I think if you wanted to run a Luca Chris Stops lineup, I think that makes sense. Everybody knows Luca and him didn't get along very well. Uh, didn't want to give him the ball. He's 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 gone on to, to play much better in Washington than he did for Dallas. And uh, I think there's a little something to that. But mostly for this game, in terms of priorities, the only guy, I, the only thing I have is. I think one of Luca or Dinwiddie has to be in my lineups as of right now because they just carry so much of the offensive weight. And if I didn't play them, it would mean Tim Hardaway Jr. would have to get hot or something. Um, the Maxi Kleba thing is is more just a a potential value filler. I always like him though on when he's not going to be owned. I hate him when he's going to be owned because he just has 
he he doesn't do a whole lot and he's got a wide range of outcomes. So there's just, it's just not the ideal guy to play, but this might be the slate where you could do it. Cause he's 3,400. I, I pass on Kristoff uh, because Bryce? again, I mentioned this a couple of times and it's, it's more of a basketball take than anything else. And I, I really, I'm so bad because I didn't really follow up on this statistically since the season started. I, I should probably look into this. He, he was interviewed before the season started. Um, and he mentioned that, that he was going to uh, be more uh, efficient with his shots. In other words, he was, did a lot of like an analysis of like his, his analytics actually. And, you know, cause he used to shoot like a whole bunch of like mid range shot, shots, stuff like that. And he was mentioning that he was going to, you know, take that to heart and be kind of more analytics, you know, savvy this year. And while that's good for basketball, um, I, I, was, I was theorizing that his just overall number of shots was going to go down um, mm-hmm. because he would give up some of the shots that he would otherwise take. So I don't know if it's if that's come to pass, he'd be shooting less. Than, I really have no idea. But, well, but I wanted that, to, that has come to pass a little bit, by the way, just FYI. What's but that? he has been getting to the free throw line a lot more, which is, again, right, which is good. Yeah, right, obviously. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let's step over to uh, what do you have next? Is the uh, oh, before, before I do that, uh, I said that I was going to live sweat the. Uh, oh yeah, let's take a quick my, my results and I, I I lied. I pulled it up. So yeah, I was in for two fifty. I cashed out for one thirty one. So as suspected, yeah, I was not able to get to the four hundred fifty four point mark uh, uh, on, on Fanduel. This my biggest. I get. Hey, I got over four hundred in one of them. That's not yeah. bad. I guess that didn't have Dwight Powell. Let's take a look at it. I'm, I'm just guessing. What if it did? That would be a little bit frustrating. uh, No, this one, of course, had 1.8% owned Harrison Barnes. Yeah. Pretty funny. uh, Can I take my victory lap on on how much better of a play Grayson Allen was than Gary Trent? No? You could take your victory lap on how good any of a play was better than Gary Trent. (laughs) Oh, my God. Darius Garden, Lou, you weren't kidding. 14 fantasy points? Horrible game. Horrible, horrible game. And and pain and pain pain went off. Pain went uh, off. Booker went off. Booker put up 60, 59 on DraftKings. Oh, Eubanks, I guess, stalled out. I thought he was even doing, doing even better than that. Yeah, he got that. in foul trouble and then Watford was really good. So okay. sort okay. of like we were saying, you got you know what I mean? It could, could go either way with those guys. Okay. Um, all right. Uh let's talk about Charlotte and Miami because this is a <laughs> I, you know, I, I can't, I got to start treating Miami differently because to me, I still think of them just as such a good, all well rounded team and the truth is I think they're a much worse team with Kyle Lowry playing uh, last year. They won the East basically with Kyle Lowry hurt almost the whole year. <laughs> and I, I, even as, even as he's played well at times, I think that it's just, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel like the same team. And and I, I may, I may not, this is a back-to-back of course, for, uh, for Charlotte. Um, it's for Charlotte and Miami actually. Um, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I, I have everybody sort of like a middling play for the Miami, but we haven't seen the big game and maybe you don't need it tonight, but it's hard to ignore Bam in this matchup. We just know Charlotte. I mean, we just saw the, the, the Portland centers put up what, like 55 against them uh, last night. Uh, Bam, if there was a breakout spot, you'd think this is it, but I feel like I've said that a number of times this year and uh, you have hero and, and Martin still questionable, which is going to, you know, dictate a lot of what we would, what else we would want to do here. If anything, I think that they're probably both going to play, but I, I really don't know, to be honest, for sure. So um, and then you, you get the, you get the value on the Charlotte side of our guy book night. And I kind of like it. Um, I think that there's a little bit of blowout proofness. You're going to have no, uh, I, I, I mean, look, it's a back-to-back for them. Rozier coming off the injury. I, I just feel like he's going to end up getting some run and we're looking for value. He's 3.2. He's, you know, the minutes have been fluctuating somewhere between 15 and, tw- and 28, um i'll take a shot there the problem is if he's going to be popular i think that's something to jump off of um so i i I have this game as like a it's it's not really at all that exciting for me Uh, i don't really like a whole lot on the charlotte side uh maybe maybe you could argue plumley just because of the price but i don't have a whole lot here that that projects well for me but but it's a it's an ugly kind of you know it's kind of a weird slate so what are you doing with this one yeah, I guess Bam is DeAndre Ayton. I mean, he like looks 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 good every every slate, and right. um, he's not gotten a single game this year that pays off this price tag. Um, mm-hmm. Just saying, um, yeah. maybe he's got one forty nine, but that's yeah. barely. Um, but I mean, he does. <laughs> not gonna lie, rates to be a very pretty decent play. Um, and other than that, I mean, doesn't feel like I want to play Butler at ninety one hundred. Um, 
but he's not the worst, I, I suppose. Um, Mason Plumley at 5K? All right, I got, I got a question. For, I, got, I got one for you. Who is – you can't play this. I was gonna I was gonna ask you who is who is Nick Richards, but okay. Um well he I mean he he gets he he's a really good fantasy point per minute, but I just don't think I can quite get to get to that. Okay. It's center only eligible. I kind of like some of the other centers we'll get into in the next game. Um, yeah, not, not nothing really for me, I don't think. Yeah, it's just hard. It's it's hard to find anything. I think the 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 best play, maybe price wise, might be Dennis Smith Jr. and he's got a bad matchup. And it, it feels like a, a reasonable spot for Book Knight. Uh, to take a shot there if he's going to be low owned, and we'll see if he's going to be based on what happens. Well, he's he's probably going to be low owned, right? I mean, well, he's projecting. I mean, on Sabersim has him, you know, as one of the best. I don't know. Oh, really? Yes, maybe one of the best point per dollar plays in the slate. Um, okay. Like, okay. yeah, and 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 I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't. Does none of it feels feels ideal to me. The Nick Richards on a back to back because Plumley played a lot last night. Maybe that could get there. So, I think you're just looking at some more speculative plays, but. As of right now, I have Bam as the best play, and I don't feel honestly all that great about it. And you don't think that um, that that um, I guess, and you don't think this is a, a uh, Jimmy Butler type of game. I mean, it's just it, it all. It's a great matchup. It's just it's it's it doesn't it's, it certainly doesn't fit the mold of of when he usually goes off and tries to take control. But if Tyler if Tyler Hero ends up out, I think then then uh, then we're talking about something totally different here, and I, I would definitely have some interest in. In him. And, and and by the way, I think I think that the, the guy who's the, the the game style would suit the most would be Hero. Um, and you think say seventy seven hundred looks expensive. Uh, he's been really good his last few games, and he sat he sat out the last one with the ankle. But if he comes back, I'm just going to assume he's good to go. He he might be my my other favorite play on Miami just because he can shoot himself into a huge game. And I think by the end of the day, I'm going to talk myself into maybe some of the Miami speculative value if it if it flocks too much to the to the Klebas and the guys like that. Why not take a shot on on Duncan Robinson on a tiny slate? He's a real issue for them because he's the, his defense. Max Stress, just one of these three point shooters, and 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 of course, if Lowry is out, uh, I'm sorry, if uh, Hero is out, I would go right back to Gabe Vincent at 4400. But it doesn't feel none of it feels really all that exciting. All right, Philadelphia, Atlanta. What do you got here, Sheets? Well, I mean, as I as I mentioned earlier, I mean there there, there are two guys that. They're ready to get more fantasy points than everybody else, and and one of them is is, is Joel Embiid. Um, so uh, looks 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 fair. <laughs> um, what 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 else on on, on Philadelphia? Um, well, I, I you know there's DeAndre Melton again. You know he he's six K, and he's going to be you know rate to be one of the top point per. I have him rated right now just below. Kleber and consider that he's 6k I guess he's got to be overall the most popular best whatever play on the slate I, I guess um that's that's what I'm seeing right now at 6k so that's that's the decision you have to make so it's Melton and Embiid for Philly and then on Atlanta I'm getting this uh uh Onyeke Akangu at 3600 mm-hmm. as a, as a good point per dollar play uh, now I'm also seeing DeAndre Hunter, who we don't really like to play in fantasy all that much. Um, so uh, he's another guy that's showing up. And I'm seeing him 20. percent So uh, talk to me, I guess, about about those guys. And uh, let me look at the look at the top, you know, the, the spend ups. I don't know if I could do Trey Young at 10 four. I, I, I don't know about that. So uh, what do you like here? So I, I I'm a, I'm I it's hard not to prioritize Embiid tonight. I actually think in this matchup, this is a good spot to play Embiid and. I really like Maxi if if the ownership stays around twenty percent or lower. Um, he shot four of eighteen in his last game. Yep. He, it's not like you know. The truth is, I, like we know, Maxi has like a, a sixty point ceiling just because he's such a heat check guy. But he also does the other things, and he can. I mean, he can do it with assists. So I have one of one of Maxi or Melton currently planning to have one of those guys in my lineups, and I have Embiid as a prior as the priority guy for me. Um, but the, the weird ones, the, 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 let's, let's, let's try to find a way to get, you know, you you get the unknown PJ Tucker, which we always hate for fantasy, but on a tiny slate against an Atlanta team that plays, you know, a couple of bigs, if, if Tucker is good to go, I I'm, I'm happy to take a shot on PJ Tucker at, you know, near the minimum 3,700, because at least I know the minutes will be there. And if the pace is, is up with it, which Atlanta will usually push the pace. Maybe this is a game where PJ Tucker can get 10 points and 10 rebounds, hit, hit two threes. 
and get 10 rebounds that gets him close to 30. I don't see why this wouldn't be a good spot for that to happen. I wouldn't be talking about it on a big slate, but on a small slate, I'm into it a little bit. And I, I feel I feel similarly with a Kongu. I actually really like a Kongu. Really? Uh, big night from Capella last night. And I think that on a back to back, we historically Capella has not been he's either been a guy who sits on back to backs or doesn't produce as much on 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 one side of the back to back. The only problem is Capella only did play 26 minutes last night as he had a really when he had a really good game. They really do like to use a Kongwu, uh, at least for his, you know, 16 to 20 minutes. And that's he's a he's a pretty good fantasy pr- producer. And you take you add on top of it the potential foul trouble for Capella. You could get a Kongwu with more minutes tonight because of the matchup with Embiid. Um, they're probably going to want one of those guys on the court at all times. I don't think John Collins matches up well enough with Embiid. So those are the main things. Um, and then it, interesting to note that Trey Young has a higher usage rate this season than he or than he does uh, than he has in, in the past seasons, with, even with playing with uh, wow. Jonte Murray because they've split him up really effectively. And as I always point out, if you have a really good point guard who's just interested in getting everybody else involved, um, it's like the Russell Westbrook thing. Everybody has their career high for points the year they play with Westbrook. So right. I, I'm not opposed to, to, to Trey Young or DeJounte um, at the moment. I'm kind of curious to see what they do on the back-to-back with these guys. And then the DeAndre Hunter is, is I really like him as a real-life player. He just doesn't put up it's, – it's really hard for him to get fantasy production because you've got Capella and Collins rebounding and DeJounte Murray, who's a great rebounder. He's his job is sort of a stick his guy and he doesn't even need to follow up and try and get the rebound. He's just a really good real life defender who doesn't get a ton of steals or blocks, um, but just a good in-person defender, which doesn't make him very appealing for fantasy for me. Um, but, you know, he certainly should belongs like in the mix of guys we talk about, but the priority is really just Embiid. And then I'm trying to figure out what, what to do with all this potential value and decide if I want to maybe take the discount and play Trey or DeJounte instead of Luca tonight. So I'm, I'm, I'm still debating on that one. Um, it, it, everybody's going to have some ownership on these kind of slates. Uh, maybe, maybe John Collins gets overlooked a little bit and we could take a, a stab at him in a tournament. Uh, he's been, he's been sort of on the downtrend lately, but only played 28 minutes last night. Maybe, maybe if Capella is limited at all, he, uh, he, he can pick up some of the extra rebounds or, or uh, an extra shot here and there rather than running that high screen and roll with Capella. With Capella. But uh, the priorities for me are mostly on the Philly side with Embiid and then one of Maxi or Melton as of right now will be in my lineups. Um, all right. The game that actually has a little bit more appeal here. What do you, what do you, what have you got looking, looking like it makes sense here? Because I, I'm assuming that they rested Nurkic and they're going to play him tonight, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that one. Um, and it, because of it, we, we, you know, we've got he, he and he and Jeremy Grant, who were both out last night, projecting to be in. If they're out, and even with them, I have a, a lot of interest in Josh Hart tonight. Um, I like the, the pace that, that New Orleans pays that. I'm just going to double check. Remember, I said I thought Hart would get 18 rebounds last night. Let's see how many he ended up with. Um, I know he had a bunch early, 11 rebounds. So he didn't quite get to the 14, but he did crush the. Uh, it's the it's also. Um... Um, if this matters to anybody, uh, he, he used to play for New Orleans. Exactly. Yeah. So, and he's so. a tough guy. He's the kind of guy who that'll get him. I don't know what it, what it, what it really means for him. Cause he doesn't have the ball in his hands much, but just the extra, extra burst on a back-to-back where your other team might be a little bit tired or whatever. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm inventing things, but I, I do think that he's, he's, he's in play. Um, Lillard's price makes it tricky. Maybe playing a, a, a what should be a very very low owned uh, Anthony Simons and just hope he gets hot. That's that's something I'm considering, and 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 I guess Lillard and he both fit that category. But I, I, I'm, it's really going to depend on what we hear about Nurkic and Grant throughout the day because that's 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 a big deal um, if those guys are out. And if Nurkic plays, I think Nurkic is 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 extremely viable at 7200, uh, especially since the other guys are playing coming off the back to back. And on the flip side. I really like Valanchunas as, uh, it, it, you know, if Nurkic doesn't play especially, but even if Nurkic plays, I think both these guys, both the big strong centers are going to be a little bit overlooked. Um, oddly enough, this game is because of the pricing going to be lower owned than the other games. And it probably, it, you know, it has the highest total. Um, so I, I want to try and get pieces here, but it's hard to know what to do with Portland without Nurkic. Okay. So um, uh, assuming that, that, Nurkic is in 
nothing from Portland looks to me to jump off the page. Um, Lillard got a price bump to 9,700. He's not looking that great, but he's looking low owned. Um, if that makes, that makes a difference. Uh, well, it does make a difference, but if that you know, makes a difference enough, um, the guy that, that I'm interested in is kind of on tilt. I'm on tilt about this because I, I, um, uh, remember I told you, I, I went from Durant X to Lillard, this next guy. And, uh, I was very disappointed with his performance last night, but I think I'm going to probably go back to him and that, that would be Zion. Um, mm-hmm. so he only, only where we played 31 minutes and it just, you know, it just wasn't a game that you know, resembles the way, you know, he usually does, does things. You know what I mean? He only 26 fantasy points. It's not like he shot particularly poorly, right? He was six for 11, but he only shot 11 shots, you know, um, seven for eight from the line. I mean, just, just kind of like an overall, just kind of like, like mediocre effort, you know? And, um, but you know, Portland is, is probably, you could write the argument Portland's a little, might be a little easier to, to deal with than Chicago. Um, I don't like Zion particularly on a back-to-back, but um, especially there's no bargain. I mean, going from Chicago all the way back to New Orleans, that's, 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 that's not the greatest, but a four game slate. Um, I, I know that he has a ceiling and I'll, uh, listen, I, I'm looking right now at him being, you know, only 15% owned on a four game slate and rating pretty well. And I think that, I think he might get lower if people game log watch, you know, he's getting a $500 price bump on top after that bad, you know, bad performance. So, uh, I'll take, I'll take a shot with him. I think. Yeah, I, I I'm, uh, I like that. And, and also don't be surprised if you hear somebody is ruled out for the Pelicans, like you've like got, Zion, <laughs> you've got, you've got, yeah, like Zion. But, but he, for what it's worth, he did play the one back to back they've had this year, and uh, and played well. And it was a traveling back to back um, from uh, from home to Adla- to Atlanta. Um, Joe Val has historically not been great on back to backs, and had a good game last night. But um, so maybe he's the guy. And then of course we should we should have probably led with this. You know, it's not the same revenge thing, but to get to play, you know, your old team in Portland and 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 go up against Lillard sort of yourself kind of interested in just the, the narrative aspect of the CJ McCollum. Maybe if he gets hot, maybe he keeps going kind of a thing. Um, even though they, they, they got along well and all that stuff, but you know, you've got Anthony Simons and, 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 and sort of taking CJ's old job and Portland rebuilding without CJ and all this, all the stuff he had to hear for years, every year is the most talked about trade deadline guy of anybody. I don't know. I could, I could see CJ, CJ is a guy who can use a little narrative too. Like he'll, he'll, he'll if, cause if he starts, if he makes a couple shots early and it's one of those situations, he'll just keep shooting. Um, so I'm kind of interested in that stuff. It, it, you know, this slate is looking very tough from the beginning. Cause there's nobody really standing out as, okay, well, you know, the value is just too good. I have to play these guys. I mean, the, the high, the best projected players that Sabersim has are Kleba, Bam and Melton um, followed by Embiid and book night <laughs> um, there is definitely reasons to fade all those guys so it's 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 gonna be tough but my guess is we hear something throughout the day especially as the majority of these teams are on back-to-backs but as of right now it's a it's a tricky one and the only guys i could come up with for my priorities is one of maxi melton one of luca dinwiddie yes Embiid, a whole bunch of different value i'm deciding on um i'd like to play one of the portland guys and i think that mccollum may be the guy i end up settling on just because I'm a sucker for a narrative. Uh, but everybody else just feels sort of like, I don't know. You, you, I guess you could play the, the all the all narrative uh, McCollum, KP, uh, Luca kind of a thing. If you can, and, and, and you have value, but it's all very speculative value. I just don't, you know, it's hard to know where it'll go, especially in that Washington situation. So I, I would encourage people to, to, to use some of that Washington stuff. Um, but as of right now, it's really hard to say who the priorities are. And I think I like a Kong Wu as my my favorite other value other than the Washington. I, I'm fine with Kleba, but if he's going to be like 30% owned, uh, that seems a little bit like something I would not, would try to avoid. I was watching, I pulled up popcorn, uh, whatever, to, to see why um, Zion, on, I guess, only played 31 minutes, I guess. But it looks as though nobody really played like a bunch of minutes except for McCollum. Um, actually McCollum and Ingram, they both played 34 and 33. They, they took Zion out after only six minutes of the first quarter. That's, that's all. That's a standard rotation. Is that a standard rotation? Then he yeah. starts the second quarter. You got yeah, another yeah. six. 
So it doesn't look that bad, I guess. I guess he's not a 36 minute guy, I suppose. Um, Sometimes, yeah, he just fluctuates with him. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, I, I think it's. Uh, I think. I think it's. A, I think it's a, a slow. Uh, I think it's a uh, low scoring low slate. Low scoring slate. Um, slate? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the absence. Well, first of all, in the absence of any real value, and in the absence of, I mean, any real like ceiling. In other words, you know, you got Luca, who always is a ceiling, but he's he's twelve five. You know, you have Embiid, who's kind of. I mean, this is kind of a. I don't know, sort of a crappy. I don't know. I don't know what to make. It, of it's definitely a tough slate. I'll say that, and and you know? I'll, I'll have a we'll have a better feel for it at six Eastern because I'm just imagining that some guys are going to sit because the the nature of it and the back to backs. Um, I will say this: the guys who are who are, who are low owned, like you said, are coming out of that last game, um, and may, may, maybe you are just supposed to play. Maybe you're supposed to play something cool, like you just said, like like Lillard and McCollum, you know. Mm-hmm. And let them go after each other at, 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 in, in, a, in a shitty slate. You know what I mean? At the end, at the end of the day, it's not. That's not the worst idea in the world. Yeah, and and the one other value piece that I'm just throwing in there, and I know there's a lot of them, but may, maybe the Herb Jones is a is a is a reasonable play at, at 4800. He's actually been like around that 30 mark a lot of lot this year. He's put up a 40, um, and he's going to project poorly almost every slate. So I uh, I think that might be a low owned thing you could do to be a filler piece at least and then if, if there's any news we're waiting on late that that would be helpful but uh i'll be live at six eastern i'll post all my yeah. all my my builds and uh and uh plays on the site all my bets of the day and all of my core plays and all that nonsense um and i'll also get it up for football shortly uh sheets anything else before we get out of here no just some i guess some announcements i suppose so i'm going to be putting out again same as last week because everybody really loved it two different mma videos one is going to be um, today is going to be the DFS uh, look and the other tomorrow is going to be the betting look. And it's, 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 uh, it's really, and listen, it's, we don't really spend too much time on betting, whether it be sports or, or whether it be basketball or MMA or whatever, but it's, it's, it's interesting for me to approach the way I have to approach each type of analysis differently. You know, the whole idea that when you're playing DFS, you, you rely on what Vegas implies is going to happen. Right. And then you create lineups based on that, where where in betting you're by definition trying to figure out why Vegas is wrong, you know, and, and where and where where you can get some kind of an edge. And and it's it, it's actually a good exercise for me um, to, to, to to present two different two different viewpoints, you know, to realize that it's not exactly the same thing, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so so look for that. Uh, we're going to do. Um, I don't know if we're going to do one now, but I, 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 I oh, so I ran projection. But I didn't really analyze. If you want to do a, uh, a showdown preview, we can. At the very least, we'll be able to cover it. I can cover it on live. I haven't taken a look at it yet. I mean, either. I mean, it's not exactly the greatest game of all time, but um, yeah. but you get uh, yeah, you get the Cordell Patterson Chubba Hubbard battle. Like I don't know, I don't know what's going to be, but <laughs> yeah. um, but but we'll 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 look at that later, and then um, and I guess that's it. Yeah, sounds good. All right, man. Well, have a good day. I'll see you at six and uh, good luck to everybody.